And so ultimately, Bollinger argues that the notion of a basic belief isn't something that we can take advantage of cognitively. It's not something that we can see as advantageous to the cognizer unless they at least have a tacit awareness of this inference schema that he outlines on page six. That is, unless it's non-basic, it's an inferentially justified belief. So he says, suppose the quality that a belief has to have in order to be basic is some property, call it psi. Now, say maybe it's subjective certainty. To end a regress on the foundationalist account, one must recognize that one has reached a belief having psi. That is, you have to have some cognitive awareness. It has to be penetrable to you that this belief has that property. In other words, you don't just believe something, but you're registering that it in fact is subjectively certain to you. Now, the previous account of justification that he just gave, right, that's going to require both that the belief have that property, right, and that property is at least potentially a qualitative conscious property. At least I've potentially got some awareness of it, some insight into the beliefs having it, and that I at least have a tentative or tacit awareness of the availability of the following kind of inference. Look, belief B has that property. My belief has the property of being subjectively certain. And beliefs that are subjectively certain are very likely to be true. Therefore, my belief is very likely to be true. And so Bonjour says, in order for me to cognitively categorize and utilize a belief as basic, I've got to recognize that it's basic. And no matter what it is that makes that belief basic, I won't be able to categorize it, to recognize it, to utilize it as basic unless right, I am at least tacitly capable of making this kind of inferential connection between the property the belief has in virtue of which is basic and that property's relationship to it being likely to be true. So I think that is Bonjour's argument against the notion of basicness because that tacit availability of the inference, that is in fact something that renders the belief non-basic. It's something in addition to the belief's property psi. At this point, Bonjour thinks he's established his conclusion, that he's shown that the notion of a basic belief is in fact internally incoherent, that no such beliefs could exist and serve the function that the foundationalist supposes that they do. However, he wants to be fair-minded, he wants to be thorough, and so he'll spend the last part of the paper exploring how a foundationalist might try to get around his claims here. And so he'll try to talk about, well, how could we get a sort of non-inferential linkage that allows a reasoner to take advantage of the basicness of a belief without having to make that inference that would render the belief non-basic. And so he considers a view that he calls externalism, a view about justification that we'll look at later on in the term, in fact, and rejects it as a rejection of epistemology, essentially. And then he turns to a more congenial attempt or strategy for trying to get around that inference linkage. And he talks about an idea that basicness might somehow be built into the very structure of the belief, either uh, through appeals to non-cognitive beliefs that establish basicness without inference, which he rejects because he says non-cognitive states cannot justify beliefs, and hence we can't come to understand the basicness of a belief from non-cognitive states. Or maybe we can somehow come up with a story within that cognitivist paradigm where we somehow kind of have 
assertive content to these states that we can sort of somehow kind of non-inferentially leverage to reveal their status and allow the reasoner to get to the justification that the belief is supposed to possess intrinsically. And he'll reject that view as well by saying, look, once we start to associate assertive content with these states, then they too will require justification and hence introduce that epistemic regress all over again. In the next and last module of this lecture, then we'll run through Bonger's reflections on how you might establish inferential linkages and the reasons that he has for rejecting each of those possible stratagems.